They don't come every year, you know. The old man is sitting at the edge of a rotting old pier, crooked legs dangling over the water. He watches a pair of seagulls preen and groom each other on a rock just off the shore. They seem to wait for something together, fidgeting and rubbing against one another. And when they fly off, they fly together. These two, these same two, have been coming here ever since I was a boy, the old man says. He watches them fly away until their bodies are dots vanishing into the low sun. Always the same pair. Wonder what keeps him coming back to this town. He shrugs. I must be home. The woman walks the small town square with the poise of Betty Davis. A confident stride and inimitable mannerisms elevating the sidewalk into a plush Hollywood carpet. And wrapped around her neck, a yellow velvet ribbon, bright as an ocean sunrise. You question a well-dressed man parked outside an oyster house. Prudish woman, I took her on a fine date and she didn't remove so much as a ribbon. Excuse me, can you step back from the coop? That's the spirit. You decide to seek a second opinion. You talk with a waitress smoking outside a diner. Something funny about her. Just showed up one day. Doesn't work, doesn't live anywhere as far as I know. Just around. Myself, I'd love to know who made all her beautiful clothes. You ask the woman if you may join her at a public bench. You may. Lovely outside, isn't it? Her eyes are a beautiful shade of brown. Beneath the yellow ribbon, a thick, fibrous scar wraps around her throat. Weather like this, it reminds me of Paris. This city is like no other you've been to. Crooked streets splay out in a maze of narrow passages, no two alike. Soon, you find yourself in twilight, utterly lost. Bright light crests around one corner, a car approaching.
Unable to afford rescue, you keep walking. The asphalt turns to crooked cobblestones that threaten to wrench your ankle out of place. Was this always a moonless night? The stars multiply, each one looking like a pinprick through which light is exiting the terrestrial world. It's hard finding your way through in pitch darkness. You go by touch and sound, feeling the scale of the streets by the echoing of your footsteps, fingers tracing the rough surface of the buildings, and then a rumble of noise in the distance. You quiet yourself, suddenly fearful. The clear sky tells you it's not thunder, but cannon fire. The city comes alive with fires and shouting. You find yourself trampled by a mob of men in thick brown coats, a phalanx of bayonets advancing up the street. When you come to, there's no sign of the commotion, the war that you were just caught in. The comically shrill honk of a Model A running up the road startles you and you crawl toward the sidewalk. Above, the sky is a sharp, cold, cloudless blue. Hey there, stranger. You're welcome to enjoy this fire with me, if you're respectful, that is. This here is my spot, and I ain't inclined to share it with any bad characters. You can call me Quinn. These here are my Venturin companions. Cass is the big un, and the one with the spots is Flip. I usually beat my way on the rails, but the road news said this town was fat, and the weather was fine. So I'm taking in the sights and seeing what I can drum up. I want to hear a story about ghosts or murderers or something. Scary stuff. Ain't life got enough tear jerkers in it without telling stories like that? Jeez. Sad. Well, oh, so you think just cause I'm young, I gotta be sad, crying after my mama every night. I don't need you looking after me, so if you're offering, don't. And I thought I told you to be respectful. What you really ought to be asking yourself is if you want to keep enjoying my spot or not. I want to hear one of them venturing tales, got any? Quite a story, stranger. Authority? Bosses and such? 
I ain't nobody's little Angelina, if that's what you're asking. I take care of myself and my dogs. I don't need no jocker looking out for me. So if you're offering, don't. Shoot, I thought I told you to be respectful. You want to keep enjoying my spot or not? Think about that. Hey, do you got any really thrilling stories to tell? I'm hankering for one of those. I don't get too much out of tales that are so cheerful. Not enough excitement for me. Love stories. Huh. Folks sure seem to be eat up with the notions of love. Singing and talking about it all the damn time. I'm not sure I see the appeal myself. Hey, tell me one of those exciting stories. Use and telling sweet happy tales if in the make you snooze. My family. There ain't no way I'm gonna start jaw flapping about those bastards. Judas's, the lot of them. Enough said. Oh heck, the night's over already. I sure enjoy talking to you, but I gotta get on. I think I'll see what's happening up the road this way. Tramping life suits me just fine. Every day is a venture. With things being so depressed, folks walk around like it's the end of everything good. But it ain't. Plenty nice things to see if you know where to look. My twin brother Paul and I always got into trouble, but we were good. We didn't do nothing to anybody, 
until we left. Then we heard a lot of people. Me, more so than Paul, because he, well, he didn't make it through. The march I was on, the bonus army. It's less a bonus and more an acknowledgement of what I've had to suffer. Civilians will never understand. So anyway, tell me a funny story? You seem like you know a few good ones. I wish I could tell that one to my sister. Travel? Well, this walk feels like a little bit of freedom now and again. The flowers along the road make for a fine company. <laughs>